Open access brings, uh, uh, opens the floodgates of access to knowledge. And what's at stake? Uh, a lot, because uh, in the realm specifically of scientific information, access is so restricted because journals are so expensive, uh, especially in developing countries which have health challenges, environmental challenges. So a lot of the information is actually most critical to these developing countries. But unfortunately, they don't have access to it. So I think what's at stake is in development and sustainable development. I'm uh, Indrajit Banerjee and I'm the director of the Knowledge Societies Division of UNESCO. Actually, actually UNESCO's uh, mission is a, a perfect fit for open access because uh, one of our core mandates is to, uh, to promote uh, a free flow of ideas by word, by image. You can't have free flow of ideas if uh, you know, uh, people don't have access. So it's just a perfect fit for us. You see, one of the things is that uh, when we try and we are a member states based organization, we have 195 member countries. And when we try to do any projects on open access, very often the question is, uh, what is this good for? And then you explain to them why it's good. And when they get convinced, they say, okay, how do we do it? And we've noticed that there are so many policy obstacles and policy challenges to open access that the perhaps the starting point in this case would be to create a policy framework and guidelines, which we can then share with our member states and once our member states have that then often they call us and say you know can you come and do a workshop for our ministry of education officials or education people uh, teachers so that they understand what this whole question of open access is all about so i think the policy guidelines are a very good starting point because it also makes them understand it better they have a concrete product in their hands they can pass legislation if required as has happened in many countries of course so I think the policy guidelines was a very important step, but uh, I would like to add that the policy guidelines were a result of a global mapping we had done on open access, just to have some sense of where open access stands. So we did a global mapping. We have a portal called Global Open Access Portal, which has got, uh, for the moment, I think it's got data on 148 countries. And there we clearly saw that there were some countries where it was a huge success because there was a policy environment. Uh, there was a political will, and other countries where it had not really moved very much. So the policy guidelines was the second step. Mm -hmm.